Here's something that's always interested my stupid little brain. Isn't it strange how we look back at the decades of the past and give them a sort of identity? The cultural zeitgeist of the times. The 60s had hippies, the 70s had this, 80s had aesthetic, you get the point. I wanted to take a quick look at why this seems to happen and why it's never going to happen again. Now this phenomenon is pretty much isolated to the 20th century. Sure, in the past, events did span decades and certainly defined them, but what I'm talking about is this overall pop culture image we associate with them today. It wouldn't start being a possibility until the second industrial revolution, and more importantly, consumerism. This consumerism defines what's trendy to buy, what everybody seems to be listening to, and the stupid stuff you wear. At the same time, these trends of the decade are mostly isolated to the youth culture. Let's just say anybody under 30. So let's lay out when the stuff seemed to start happening. The first decade, the 1900s, saw an increase in consumer goods and the rise of film, but culture as a whole was still defined by conceptions of the past. In other words, the stuff people saw in film and listened to on the radio didn't make them go out and buy stuff. The 1910s gave us war, a world war. The prime demographic for setting trends was fighting the Great War, and it's not a surprise we really don't identify a pop culture component. More important things were going on. But the 1920s is where things get more interesting. An economic upturn spurred consumer interest. With this new money, people wanted to buy fancy things and look trendy. But prohibition got in the way of everybody having a good time. People found a way around this. Speakeasies popped up, jazz was blaring, flappers were around. A culture of indulgence in clubs built up to give us this jazz age we quickly identify with the era. The key here is that economic upturn. More people had more money, and in the decades where this is applicable, we see a very distinct identity pop up. As you probably know, the 30s weren't the best time for the economy, and such an identity is lost other than palpable sadness. Young people weren't going out and looking trendy, they were trying to find any job they could to survive. The 1940s saw another war, and it defined the decade, much like the 1910s. The prime demographics that would spur the pop culture identity were fighting abroad. Economic conditions did start to improve after the war and by the end of the decade, and that's where things really start getting interesting. The 1950s are much like the 1920s in a few ways, at least in America. Economic conditions were great, and the young people of the country had a ton of disposable income. They bought cars, bought records. It might sound cynical to say, but honestly these identities are influenced heavily by the market. Companies would find what is hip and act accordingly. Rock and roll was popular, sure, but it also made a lot of money. People liked it, so it was playing 24-7 on these youth-oriented radio stations. People drove their cars to diners and had a lovely time, and it creates the specific peak Americana identity. The 1960s were less ideal. With war in Vietnam in full force, a counterculture movement rose up. Now this also plays into Strauss Howe generational theory, which I've discussed before, but I won't bore you with too many details. Basically, it's a theory that claims a cycle exists in which each generation conforms to. This counterculture was about disregarding societal norms, and I think you understand the rest. The 70s, well, now they have less of a cultural identity than the 50s and 60s, wouldn't you say? Think about what the identity of the 1970s would be, disregarding disco. Pretty hard, isn't it? Economic downturn made it so much of the 70s aesthetic was based on the ideas of the 60s. A lot of young people didn't have the disposable income of the past few decades, and it culminated in a less than memorable zeitgeist. Now with disco, that's complicated. We sort of lump it in as this all-defining attribute of this decade simply because there isn't much else. Disco was different than the 60s, and it had some relative notable success, so yeah. We just associate the 70s with it. Now the 1980s were different, especially by the middle of the decade. People had money, the economy was good, and consumerism was alive and well. And it wasn't hard to exploit this new untapped market. MTV brought about a new wave, pun intended, of music. People saw these musicians in their homes constantly now. The musicians were wearing weird stuff in the videos and people wanted to replicate it. In fact, a lot of these cliché fashion statements of the 80s started with an appearance in a movie or music video, and people just wanted to emulate that. The culture of film turned from artistic pieces to more of a mass production line. Star Wars was a massive success, and studios wanted their own mass market films. Everything was big, bright, and driven by, you guessed it, consumerism. Now the 1990s is where we see a bit of fragmentation in this general trend. 
Early on was the rise of grunge, and many people associate that with the decade as a whole. But this was an era where cable TV was gaining mass popularity, the internet was rising, and as a whole the cultural zeitgeist becomes fractured. Tony Hawk Pro Skater, rap, the PlayStation, there wasn't a single identity and instead of much wider breadth in that sense. This would be a trend in itself that would keep growing as we reach the 2000s. 9-11 shaped a different image, a darker image in people's lives. Different than pure pop culture, consumerism, but instead of mindset. But it didn't really define the consumerist nature of the decade. Instead, it was more of a defining trait, a political trait. So is that the zeitgeist of the times? Kind of. It certainly changed the culture to a point where we define many things as occurring in a post-9-11 world. But I think we need to look a little bit further. The trends of the 20s, the 50s, the 60s, and 80s, it was all impactful in what people wore and what people listened to. 9-11's impact was much more political. So what was the 2000s identity if not political? Well, on a musical basis, homogenization was ending. Hip-hop was massively popular, but at the same time, iTunes and pirating music meant a lot of people were not limited to the radio station choices. In terms of, well, everything else, there was a gradual shift in multiple directions, as the internet was reaching not just popularity, but necessity. The general origins of social media were seeing the youth culture be associated with it, but as we know, this would not forever be isolated to a younger generation. It began a split where people were not seeing the same cultural zeitgeist. People had access to tons of media, culture, information, and it all became so frequent and isolated to specific groups of people that true cultural trends would either reach a minority of the youth population or fade away in favor of something else very quickly. Also, that recession didn't help consumer spending. But that brings us to this decade, the 2010s. It's coming to an end, and when you ask people what the identity of the decade is, they probably don't have a great answer. Most commonly, social media. But this raises some questions. As the 2010s went on, smart devices allowed social media to be accessed from anywhere. This meant that many people were constantly involved in it, and it certainly reaches a majority of the population. At first glance, it would seem like a perfect candidate to define the decade, but you have to think about the future. Social media isn't a trend or a fad. Maybe certain websites are, but the idea of communication and media all accessible from the internet isn't going away. And because of this, we can look at the 2010s as the start of its complete domination over the mass public. It's not isolated to the 2010s. In the 2020s, it'll still be there. Same with 2030s, 2040s, and so on. The pop culture that would normally define music tastes, media, and fashion over the decade are now accessed by social media. And it moves quickly. Trends don't last years like before, but weeks and days. Every potential cultural zeitgeist lives and ends within a blink of an eye. It's why we can't say hipsters defined the decade because it was a fad that faded away rather quickly. There is no singular culture youth of the generation follow since it either moves so fast or is isolated to specific subgroups. But at the same time, social media isn't just limited to a younger generation. Everybody is starting to use it. This means more and more subgroups are forming where things become in and out of favor incredibly quickly to niche groups. And this niche is what makes it hard for the only people that truly benefit from the mindset of a decade-defining culture, the corporations. Every time a company attempts to appeal to the youth demographic, it comes off as ill-informed and forced, right? and it's not going to end anytime soon. So what's the point here? Why does it even matter? Well, I don't know. Sure, there is some level of disappointment knowing we won't see the next synth new wave movement entrench our populace, but that's fine for us. Who it's not fine for is businesses. For corporations, it makes it basically impossible to mass market to a specific generation going forwards, and it's going to be hard to capitalize on trends that only last a few weeks. But they've found one way around this. Nostalgia. Nostalgia is easy to predict for specific generations. It works in a cycle where the media you consume in your youth becomes prime for exploitation when you have disposable income. It's why 80s nostalgia was so huge back in the early 2010s, and now 90s nostalgia is taking over. It's reasonable to assume that 2000s nostalgia will pop up in a few years. But what after that? 2010s? That's when it runs into another wall. Without that cultural zeitgeist that defines everybody in the generation, I'm generalizing of course, capitalizing on nostalgia will become significantly harder. You won't be able to just make pixel art and expect your product to succeed on nostalgia alone. So maybe it is over. Well, unless people become nostalgic for 80s and 90s nostalgia itself. But that's just stupid. This is Tyler of Knowledge Hub. 